how do I even say hi? I've been sat watching YouTube videos for like a good hour this morning of how people say hello and I just feel like I can't do that. Right, she's going with it. Literally been sat here for like two hours, probably more than two hours, trying to film this video that I wanted to film for like the past six years. But now that I'm actually doing it, I just want to, <laughs> just want to run away. Hello. I'm Ellis, but you probably know that because it's probably only people that know me that want to see me make a tip myself that are watching this. So I have some fun for the next however long that I'm filming this for. My New Year's resolution was to overcome it and talk online, make more of a bit of a personality for myself because I feel like online I just look like a moody bitch. So, so yeah, I'm going to do a Q&A today because I feel like what other video would you start off with? I've got quite a few other different videos that are all written down as bits of paper, so if you hear like, that's why. Um, but I'll tell you them at the end, so stay tuned. My first question is, if I could live anywhere, where would it be? I've just moved into a flat in Hereford with my boyfriend. He works down here and my job's a lot more flexible as to where I can go. Um, I've been with him for three and a half years. He's a professional dancer and he'll kill me if I didn't put that in. Um, but if I could live anywhere else in the world, I have no idea to be fair because I feel like I haven't seen enough of the world to be like, I want to move to Australia even though I've never been to Australia. I think I definitely want to live in London at some point in my life, but I think I've just come from like a tiny village with like 300 people in it and now I'm in Hereford that's I think got like 60,000. So yeah, going to like London now will be quite a big jump. Um, I feel like I need to travel a bit more before I can actually like answer that question. But I'll always want to go back up to the lakes for when when I'm old and retire and that kind of thing. So the second question is, what would I call my style? Very stylish today. I don't really know. I don't really have like a specific name for it. If I like something, I'll wear it. Some days I'm quite girly and other days I'll literally wear all of Cam's clothes and go out dressed like a boy or I'll wear a tracksuit. Like, I don't know. It's a bit of everything. At school, everyone used to call me Indy. Oh. Shout out to you guys. Um, the next question is, who's my longest best friend? And strangely enough, she asked it herself, obviously. Um, I think that's a girl called Sophia, but I can't really remember. She clearly just wanted to be part of my new YouTube career. <laughs> but definitely do a video with her. So if you have any like challenges or anything. Um, right, the next question, I've sort of mashed two together because one sort of needs the other one to be explained. I'll probably talk for ages about them, so I'm very sorry. Well, the first one is, how did I get into modelling? Um, and what's the most daring thing I've ever done? So I was at uni studying to be a paramedic and I kept falling asleep, like I fell asleep in the ambulance. Not great, do not advise. And I went to the doctor and I was like, this should not be happening. Why do I keep falling asleep? Um, and they were like, you might have narcolepsy. Brilliant. But I was like, I don't have that because you don't just fall asleep. Like I would never fall asleep just like speaking now. So they said I could stay at uni until I finished first year, but but they said I wouldn't be able to sort of do anything. So I wouldn't be able to complete anything that I needed for, well, to pass the year. So I think that the most daring thing I've ever done was choose to leave uni. And yeah, it was scary. And obviously when you've moved your entire life down from the Lake District to Brighton, it was like a massive thing and it's obviously, you don't want to disappoint anyone. I didn't want to disappoint my mum and dad or my boyfriend or... I didn't want to feel like I'd sort of took the easy route out. But everything happens for a reason. I feel like I've had seeds in my teeth the whole way through this. I'm drinking a smoothie. I definitely got one in my teeth. Sorry. So yeah, about six months later after leaving uni, um, numerous like sleep studies and that kind of thing, I found out I had idiopathic hypersomnia, which idiopathic means they don't know why and hypersomnia means really tired. So like the opposite of insomnia, so all I want to do is sleep. I don't feel the benefit of sleep at all. So when I was falling asleep, it was because I wasn't stimulated. So say if, I don't know, I was watching a series that I really, really liked, I would still fall asleep just because my, I wasn't doing anything. So if I was sat on my phone, I wouldn't fall asleep. But if I was not doing anything, I would. So if I'm doing work really hard, like reading, um, reading for like lectures and stuff, falling asleep in lectures. They put me on some sort of stimulant drug called modafinil, 
which didn't work. It made me feel really, really ill. Um, got like bad heads, didn't want to eat at all, which is not like me. So I rang them up and I was like, I can't be on these. They're not doing any good for me. Like I started getting really bad anxiety, which I've never had before. So that was like scary in itself. So then after about another two months, maybe two months, of not having any tablets, I was put on, I'm gonna go find them. What are they called? I'm probably gonna absolutely butcher this. Dexamphetamine sulfate tablets, which basically is like a stimulant drug. I take them every morning and lunchtime. I do not know how I coped without them because I can like do so much more in the day now. That's why I've decided to start like doing a YouTube video because usually if I was at home all day doing nothing day off work, I would sleep. Most I've slept in a day before has been like 18 hours. So like if I'm not doing anything, I'd rather sleep than do stuff, which obviously is quite frustrating because I was exhausted and it's not as if I'm like, it wasn't me being lazy or anything. So yeah, now that I'm on these tablets, yeah, I just feel so much better. I was a bit like, do I need to share my problems on the internet? But it's a bit of me, so have it. I do want to go back to uni at some point, but at the minute, um, I don't even know if I've said that I'm a model yet. I don't think I have. So yeah, I am a model. And at the minute that's going really, really well. So I'd quite like to keep doing that as long as possible and then sort of deal with a proper job. Deal with sort of like going back into education to get another job at some other point. This past year off uni has like, has like proper taught me that you don't need to go to, to uni straight off. And you've got all the time. Well, you've got your whole life to do everything. So that's enough inspirational quotes from Ellis today. So the second question is, how did I get into modeling? Um, so when I left uni, I was doing, well, I was just working at the pub in my village for about two months. I was like, I need something to work towards because I didn't know if I was going to be able to go back to uni or not. And I didn't want to just waste my time working at the pub to find out maybe a year later that I couldn't go back to being a paramedic. Two or three months later, a modelling agency in Manchester messaged me and I went to see them. They really liked me and I really like them as an agency and I'd love to work with them in the future but I think for me at the minute they weren't the agency for me. They're a great great agency but I think for where I am right now in my modelling career I don't think they were quite right. I went to see Chador Models in Manchester, got on with them really really well, I feel like I do fit in there very well which is really nice. I was signed with them at the end of June and had to test shoot for quite a while because I didn't really have any any like portfolio or anything behind me. So yeah, I did a lot of test shoots, which cost a lot of money traveling to Manchester. I think I worked out, I spent like nearly like, I don't know, like 500, 600 pound maybe, trying to build up my portfolio. And it's so scary that it might not be worth it. Especially when I was just working at the pub, like I didn't have loads of money and, yeah, it was long, but I absolutely loved it and it got me so, so excited that that could potentially be like a part-time job. So yeah, after about a month or two of test shooting, I was put on the website and I started working. My first job was Beauty Bay, which was mad. I've worked for quite a few big names, quite a few, quite a few different people um, and it's going so, so well and I'm now full-time and I was just signed with Nevs in London, which is crazy as well. I did not think it would sort of all blow up to be this this like other career that was always a sort of dream in the back of my mind that I never thought I would do. Very, very grateful for everything that has happened. I don't know if you want me to do like more of a in-depth video about like what kind of jobs I've done, like all that kind of thing. So let me know. So I've lost what number I'm on, I think. Let's go with number seven. Have I ever hated something that I've had to model? Um, yes. Obviously, you're not going to like everything. I get booked on jobs, anything from doing shoes, doing wedding dresses, doing makeup, doing different clothing lines and stuff. So you're obviously not going to like everything that you try on, but there has been a few, few things that work great. If you feel good in the clothes or feel good in what you're modelling or your makeup's really good that day, obviously your work's going to look better if you're feeling better like in normal life, you have days where you feel better about yourself and you have days where you feel worse, but you can't really let that show if you're not feeling good because obviously they've employed you to make the clothes look good. So you can't be stood there with a face like thunder. You're not gonna intentionally make the clothes look bad, like you're paid to do a job. So I wouldn't say I've ever 
shown that I didn't like clothes, but you can definitely tell when you really like what you're modelling, if that makes any sense, and I hope it does. So the next question is, who's my favourite photographer? I had to be fair, I had to sit and think about this one for quite a while, because I was like, am I going to choose someone that I've worked with, or am I going to choose someone that I follow on Instagram? Like, I didn't know sort of where to go with it, but I went with who I've worked with. One of my favourite photographers, Megan, is sick. I'll, I don't know if I can link things below, I don't know how to use YouTube, so... She's called Megan Healy on Instagram, you'll find her. I met her when doing a, a shoot in Manchester and that was like an urban street style shoot. And since then she started doing studio work, which is incredible. I just think for such a young age, she's got her head like screwed on about what she wants to do, who she wants to work with. And I think that's really, really important, especially in such a quite populated industry, you need to know what you're doing. I think she's 21. I could be wrong, I'm really sorry if I'm wrong way but I think it's ridiculous what she does and yeah, she's super, super talented. Another one is Thomas Wood that I did a test shoot with. I think his work is incredible. Definitely, I think my favorite test shoot I've ever done. I'll put some pictures here. <laughs> Definitely not gonna be able to do that. That'll be really awkward me just sat going. So yeah, I know I was meant to only pick one, but I picked three. So the third is Jay Mawson. He, I think he's based in Manchester. I shot with him in Manchester and he did my first sort of pictures that went in my book and still some of my favourite pictures that I've ever had. Just really like clean, really neutral, nice shots. I don't really know how to describe photography. So the next question is who inspires me as model or who are my model inspirations? Well done as you reworded a question. It's got to be Cara Delevingne that she was probably one of the first models that I like really recognised as somebody who I wanted to follow. I think because I had big eyebrows when I was little and she had big eyebrows, when she came about she made big eyebrows a cool thing, like start of secondary school. I didn't get bullied for my eyebrows, just people like, Alice, why are your eyebrows so big? Why don't you pluck your eyebrows? Um, and I know that I probably should just pick one for these questions. Emma Connolly has just got to be another because she's such like a positive person. And I know online isn't like, what reality necessarily is, but you can't fake waking up at half five in the morning to go and do like loads of classes and stuff. But she's absolutely stunning and I also think she's really versatile as well. Just what you want to be, you know, I personally don't want to be a model that sticks to one thing. And for the minute it's working out as like, like I said before, I'm doing so much varied stuff. That's the last question. And my final question is, what videos am I going to make in the future? And I really hope I stick to it, but I can't really like stick to a schedule. I know I've only just started out and I'm talking as if I've been doing this for years. I mean, it's taken me literally all day to film this. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But the kind of things that I would like to make, the kind of things that I enjoy watching, I want to do like a series, <laughs> series, of get ready with me videos. So for different things, obviously. I'd like to do get ready with me's for castings, um, for like nights out. I'm not very good at makeup or I'm not very good at doing my hair or that kind of thing, but I enjoy doing it, so we'll do it. And if there's any topics that you want me to talk about whilst doing that, then I can do. Get ready for a casting or get ready for a night out or get ready for a day or that kind of thing, you know, the usual. I also want to do like a day in the life of a model, like a behind the scenes, but obviously I need to find a brand that would be happy for me to do that. I also need to get comfortable with filming in front of other people because I definitely, definitely am not ready to do that yet. I'd like to do some like styling videos and maybe like a few lookbooks, that kind of thing. And if there's any particular either styles or pieces that you want me to, to style, I shall try and do that. Let me know. I'm going to do some hauls, obviously, because I spend so much money on, well, now that I've got a house, I'm in TK Maxx home every single day. I've already bought a lot of stuff for the house, but I want to do a haul on stuff that I have bought for the house. Um, and the same with clothes. I bought quite a lot of clothes recently, so I'd like to do a video on them. I'd also like to do some fitness videos. Well, for my 21st birthday, Cameron's taking me away to Budapest at the end of March, which is incredible. So I'll try and film it. I'm not promising anything. Um, and also, I don't know, anything else that you'd like, like to see me do? Let me know. So yeah, that's it. Hopefully I'll be back. We'll see how I get on.